Victor Rallo Jr. for the original Basil Tees Brewery Italian Grill in Red Bank, New Jersey. And I'm going to give you a big Vic. He was the man, his recipe for me for meatballs. I'm here with Chef Alvin Molina. He's the executive chef here. And we're going to show you how we do it right now. First time ever. So here we have all the ingredients. We have two pounds of veal, two pounds of pork, and two pounds of beef. We have six to eight cloves of garlic, one ounce of chopped parsley. In that bowl over there, we have the brown garlic and olive oil, and we'll get to that. We have salt, pepper, eggs, and extra virgin olive oil. Okay, the first step with the ingredients is you got to soak the bread. And if we're using two pounds of veal, pork, and beef, you want to have enough bread so you have equal parts. You break up the bread. You can use Italian bread, some old white bread, whatever. We break up whatever bread that we have, and we soak it in water. And you got to soak it until the bread is soft. Now this is the key. If you want to make floaters, nice light meatballs, bread. If you want to make sinkers, breadcrumbs. Never use breadcrumbs and meatballs. That was Big Vic's secret. So Elvin is here. He's soaking the bread. He's going to get it nice and soft. And uh, that takes about 10 minutes. And while he's doing that, soaking the bread, we're going to chop the garlic and saute the garlic because these are the two things you have to do first. Takes eight cloves of fresh garlic. He's gonna chop it and dice it very fine. Again, you don't want big chunks of meat, uh, garlic in your meatball. You want very fine diced, chopped chunks of garlic. Never leave it raw, or else they're gonna taste like garlic balls. You do not want garlic balls. You want meatballs. Once he gets that all chopped fine, we're gonna put it in a sauté pan with some extra virgin olive oil. I would use extra virgin or a good oil. Again, there's not a lot of ingredients in meatballs, so you taste all the ingredients. Okay, the garlic's all chopped. Chef has it in a little bowl over there. You can see our bread's still soaking over here. Keep moving it around. You want that bread to really get soft. Soak it up. You don't want hard pieces of bread in those meatballs. Again, to make floaters, bread. Sinkers, breadcrumbs. We always make floaters here. Here we go. We're going to brown up the garlic. We have a hot saute pan over here on the stove. It's going to add some extra virgin olive oil, coat the bottom of the pan. He's going to add the fresh garlic. And we want to saute the garlic till it's nice and brown. It takes about two minutes and the garlic's diced really fine and the pan's hot. You can see the garlic is turning brown. When you get that nice brown color to the garlic, pull it off the stove and put it in that big bowl. Now the big thing here is, the reason we have this little bowl to the side is, you don't want to put hot oil into the cold ingredients. So you want to saute the garlic, first or second thing you do, and then put it to the side so it cools to room temperature before you mix it into your ingredients. Okay, now we, we go, brown the garlic, and now we're back to the bread. You can see the bread is nice and soft. And what Elvin does is he squeezes all the water out of that bread. And then once he squeezes all the water out of it, it's going to look like this over here. You can take a little colander <clears throat> or a strainer, and you put the bread and you smush it into the colander and you can see all the water leaks out. You want to get all the water out of that bread. This is the bread that we're going to mix with our meatballs and again this is the key. Floaters, bread, sinkers, breadcrumb, always use bread. Okay, now we're ready to mix the meatballs. First we start with ground veal, two pounds. Ground pork, two pounds. Ground beef, we like to use 80-20 beef, two pounds. Two pounds of soaked bread, so even amounts. In your store, in the butcher, they sometimes call this meat meatloaf mix, the veal, beef, and pork, and you can buy it together, or if you have to ask a good butcher, or go to Whole Foods, or a good supermarket, you'll be able to get all three meats. Chef mixes it by hand, don't mix it with a mixer, because again, you want to keep everything light and airy. You mix it with a mi mixer, sinkers. You mix it by hand, floater. We're here to make floaters today. Delicious, light meatballs. Floaters and sinkers was a terminology coined by the great Big Vic Rallo when he was discussing meatballs. So chef mixes the meat and the uh, bread together. Now he's going to add one ounce of chopped parsley, fresh parsley. He's going to add your garlic and olive oil. Make sure you get all that garlic in there. He's going to add salt. So we cover that. Probably about two teaspoons full of salt. And then he's going to put 
a pretty liberal amount of crushed pepper. We like to use the fresh pepper. It just gives it a better flavor. Uh, again, we're going for pure freshness here. Okay, the final ingredient is two eggs. Uh, two eggs, they help hold the meatballs together. Two eggs for the two pounds of each of the meats, two pounds of bread, two eggs. Real easy to remember. Two, 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 two. And then you mix it nice and slow. Make sure you integrate all the stuff mixed together. Elvin's folding it over little by little, not pressing too hard, just to make sure that everything's mixed through and you have a consistent mix. Now this mix will make approximately 32 meatballs, and you might say that's crazy. But you know, it's a little bit of a ordeal to make meatballs, so you might want to use, you know, half or 20 of them today or for Sunday sauce, and then freeze the other half. We like to freeze them, make them into balls, freeze them uncooked, defrost them, and then use them again. And he's going to portion them, and we use a four ounce portion. He's made so many meatballs that he, he's got this portion. He knows the exact portion to make them. And you just do them like that and pack them real tight. Okay, so now we have the meatballs all made. Chef made them all, put them on a tray. They're four ounce meatballs. Now we're going to get ready to fry the meatballs. Now the key to frying meatballs is have nice hot oil. And in this particular instance, we do not use extra virgin olive oil because you're frying and it breaks down too quickly. We use a nice olive oil blend. And the key here is to get the meatballs nice and brown. Now there's two ways you can finish these meatballs. You get them nice and brown, and if you're going to slow cook the sauce, you can put the meatballs that are nice and brown right in the sauce. You can't stir it a lot because the meatballs will break. At the restaurant, what we like to do is brown the meatballs finish them in the oven, and then put them in the sauce so we're sure that the meatballs stay intact. And we're sure on Sunday afternoon, <coughs> when you're ready to cook the pastas, the raviolis, or lasagna, that the meatballs are not broken in half. Chef is turning them over. You can see that beautiful brown color. The eggs in there help keep that together because, again, we're making nice, light meatballs. And people put breadcrumbs in meatballs because they can't hold them together. But if you treat these delicately, you handle them easily, they stay together with the bread in there, and you can see that right now. And once they're nice and brown on all sides, we're going to transfer them to a sheet tray and bake them in the oven at 350 degrees for like 10 to 15 minutes, just so they get, hooked, they get cooked through. And we're ready to put them in the oven. Chef puts them in the oven. And we'll bake them for about 30, about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on your oven. Chef has the oven open. He's going to take the meatballs out. They're beautiful out of the fryer. They're nice and hot. Here's the final part. Take the meatballs gently. Put them in that tomato sauce. Cook it for another hour or so. And, you know, we're going to give you a tomato sauce recipe, but, you know, everybody has their grandma's favorite. So put them right in your favorite tomato sauce. You could brown some sausage up, throw it in there, some brajol. If you like to throw a hard-boiled egg, a couple of eggs in there, Sicilian style, that's good too. And oh my God, you're ready to eat some of the best floater, beautiful meatballs in the world. Thanks to Big Vic for this recipe. Thank you for Elvin for being here to help me uh, put this video on for you guys. And remember, there's nothing like a meatball on Sunday afternoon in front of that TV watching the football game. Bon appetit.